timing, Millie. Say hello. This is my dog, Mill. Good girl. Good timing. Come over for a pat just as I start to do my video. Hey. <laughs> ah, Andrea Martel, Joy Scientist. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I haven't done one of these for a little bit. Uh, I've been focusing on some other things for the minute, but I'll get to it. So this is a video reporting on the experiment of doing Tai Chi. So my classes that I did, uh, Beginner's Tai Chi, wrapped up about four weeks ago. And um, since then, I have been, I've kept up the practice, uh, which is always, you know, <laughs> You do wonder how, how you're going to go when it's not in the formal structure of a class. Uh, but effectively, I manage to do a bit of Tai Chi uh, kind of every other day, so three to four times a week um, at this stage. Um, I like it best doing it here in my backyard on, on the grass. Uh, with the sun out when it chooses to, um, to come out. So we're heading into winter here in Melbourne. So um, I might just have to sort of suck it up and start uh, doing it indoors uh, as opposed to outdoors when the weather uh, doesn't sit. Um, so yeah, I guess the nice thing is, is that knowing that I'm sticking to it as, as a practice, uh, clearly there's some benefits there for me or I just wouldn't um, if I don't get any enjoyment or benefits out of something I don't stick with it it's like why waste my time seriously um, and I think it's it's a little hard to quantify what the actual benefits are um, I do the full set of um, warm-up the warm-up routines which um, for the Paul Lamb Tai Chi version that I'm doing you work through all of the all of the joints so you want like the neck the shoulders the spine hips knees ankles um, and I think there's something about um, just knowing that I'm moving each of those deliberately and intentionally every time I do this practice uh, is of benefit because um, it's very easy to go through you know, quite a few days, particularly with the work that I do, a lot of it sitting, sitting down at a computer, um, is actually knowing that I'm deliberately and moving and assisting those joints. Um, I was chatting with a lady uh, who comes to my monthly gatherings this week and she, she said that she'd seen the report that I'd done on Tai Chi to date and how that I'd encourage her to actually sign up for classes for yoga. Um, she already has a yoga practice. <laughs> anyway, the particular type of yoga that she does is Drew Yoga, and it's got similarities with Tai Chi in that it's very slow. <laughs> um, and she was articulating her, her frustration um, around the movements being so slow, um, and particularly being under an instructor. Um, who then slows it down again for the group to actually take time to get to know the movements. Um, and we're sort of laughing about how frustrating these practices can be. Um, and I was, I've been reflecting on that because yes, it is frustrating. Um, and I think it all comes down to that. We're pretty busy and we're very good at rushing around and that's what we're used to. That's now the world that we live in, a lot of us. Um, and so that's become our comfort zone is actually having lots on, having a big to-do list, constantly being busy, working hard, not, not stopping. Uh, quite often when we stop, it's to watch a Netflix series. Well, me personally. Um, and so, these practices like yoga, um, tai chi, meditating, 
I'm sure you can think of a few others that aren't coming to my mind, but these practices where we deliberately stop and slow down <laughs> are just so unfamiliar that it sits in the realm of being outside our comfort zone. Um, yeah, and it, I guess what's funny is being in the development space is that we talk about you know growth and change happens when we step outside our comfort zone so um, it's funny because it seems counterintuitive but if doing nothing or really really slowing down is outside our comfort zone then doing it and practicing it is actually good for growth and change <laughs> ah, it's great so yes all up, I'm stoked that I've continued up with the practice. Um, so yeah, as I said, every other day, just going through the routines of what I learned in the classes last term. Um, I've got access and I've actually posted the link on this page um, that I'll be putting this video on on my website, um, a link to Paul Lamb's um, materials. And so when I choose to, uh, to extend and expand on what I've already learned. I've got access to that. I don't actually have to go do classes for it. Um, although I might, because there's also the benefits of the community and the people that um, interaction, socialization, all that fun stuff um, with, with doing the classes. So yeah, so all up um, in summary, I guess this experiment has been really beneficial for me. Um, I've learnt more about myself, I've learnt more about movement, I've getting comfortable with slowing down um, and just really being able to be more present and in my body. Um, I talk about being in my body a lot uh, with um, my program called Joy Embodiment uh, that's coming out very, very soon. Uh, and so this has just really reinforced the need, desire and the importance <laughs> for, for slowing down and being more conscious and aware inside our bodies and um, the benefits of that are definitely joy enhancing. Um, yeah, anyway, that's for another video for another time. And uh, yeah, I've rambled on enough. So thank you very much. Uh, Andrea signing off here, joy scientist. Have a great day. Thank you.